let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, who decided to give up all the glory of heaven to come and take human form. As we celebrate Advent again, enable us to understand the mystery of the Word becoming flesh and how the Word becomes light to our paths today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to this short devotion on the second Sunday of Advent where we meditate on how the Word of God becomes light to our path. Our opening song today is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. taken from Psalms 119 verses 105 to 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your rules. I hold my life in my hands continually, for I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without that end. Amen. Today's Gospel is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 18. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, and the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, 
and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of a heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, the second Sunday of Advent, we normally meditate on the birth of John the Baptist. It is also the Bible Sunday, where we look at the Word of God as to how it becomes light to our paths. For a short reflection this morning, I've chosen the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah, found in Luke 1, 67 to 80. If Advent is all about waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word incarnate, who is this Word? What is it that we are waiting for? How does this Word become a light to our path? We will look at the Christology of Benedictus, how Zechariah understands his Christ and proclaims the coming Christ to the small world around him and thus to the larger world, to the ends of the earth. In verse 68, he begins, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on Israel and redeemed us. Two very important declarations about word becoming fresh, becoming human. One, it is the declaration about the favor of the Lord. If we look at the original version, we understand what it says is, God has visited his people. God from on high has come down all the way to visit his people. What happen, happens at the manger, what happens at incarnation is the great visitation of the Lord Almighty to be part of the lives of yours and mine. The great light comes into a context of darkness where he becomes light to all of us and leads us from darkness into eternal light. That's how he begins and then says, he is the great redeemer. People who were in the pit of sin, pit of darkness, were redeemed by the coming down of the Messiah. He is declaring forth that his son John would be the precursor, the forerunner of this Messiah who is yet to come. The word Lutrosin is used only in the Gospel of Luke. When we look at the four Gospels in chapter 1, verse 68, and chapter 2, verse 38. And it talks about a ransoming redemption. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, Hebrews 9 and 12, this word is used to talk about redemption from the penalty of sin. And ransoming redemption is always by paying a price. And here, Luke is writing through the words of John's father, Zechariah, that what happens at incarnation is God becomes the Redeemer. He redeems us from darkness, darkness of the pit of sin and leads us into life eternal. Secondly, in verse 69, he says, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Another beautiful word wherein we have to understand its depth, its meaning when we talk about Christmas, when we talk about Advent, and that is soterias, soter, saviour, salvation. The word literally means deliverance. 
for salvation, safety, salvation, including the soul's safety. It's a typically Lucan word used four times in Luke and six times in Acts and its meaning is salvation. Dear friends, what is Christmas all about? Christmas is all about celebrating the horn of salvation that is declared unto the entire creation. It's the story of salvation. It's the story of deliverance. Deliverance from darkness, deliverance into the mighty light of the Lord. Thirdly, Zechariah says, here is the fulfillment of the prophets. Prophets from the beginning has always pointed fingers, pointed to a future, pointed to a glorious future where the Savior would come down. We would be saved from our enemies, from the hands of all those who hate us. It's not just a word of hope to a people under imperial rule, but a promise of a great redemption, not just from enemies, but from the enemy. The promise of a great redemption from not just those who hate us, from the great hater. Hate, the darkness of hate, the darkness of enmity. The Lord redeems us. The Lord delivers us. The Lord sets us free as was promised by the prophets. And therefore, who is Christ the Word incarnate? Christ the Word incarnate, whom we are waiting for, is the one who is the one promised by our foreparents, promised by the prophets that he would come to be a liberator, a redeemer. And therefore, at Christmas, we are actually waiting for the promised one, waiting for the one who promised us to deliver us from darkness into light, light eternal. The fourth word used in the Benedictus by Zechariah is this. He has come to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Elios. It means kindness or goodwill towards the miserable. Mercy and efficacy of God is offering the people caught in the labyrinth a way out. The labyrinthine realities of sinfulness needs a panacea, needs a way out. And Christmas is the celebration of the mercy of God Almighty. Mercy is the innate character of Christ, the innate character that takes upon itself the sinfulness and the penalty of sinfulness so that people are redeemed from that penalty. It is grace and grace alone. We have heard about the mercy petition and when the president or the people in charge decide on a mercy petition, what they are saying is not that what you have done is not wrong. Not that what you have done does not deserve punishment. It does. However, despite all that, we are giving you mercy, a second chance, a new opportunity where we blot away the punishment that is due unto you and gives you a new opportunity and sets you free. New opportunity to go out and start afresh again. That mercy that takes us out of the darkness of a future that is denied to us and gives us a future a new future, a future of new light. Dear friends, that's what we are expecting at Christmas. That's what we are expecting to celebrate at Christmas. Mercy that reaches out to the most miserable. The fifth word that Zechariah uses is the word covenant. The covenant that the Lord had with our ancestors. 
delivered them out of the hands of the enemy a covenant that will help them a deliverance that will help them to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life we could pick any of the words salvation is all about imputed righteousness salvation is all about holiness salvation is all about diakonia serving god salvation is all about being with god without fear dear friends what is christmas what is it that we are waiting for from the maya of unholiness god the word becoming human coming down living amidst us taking up the burden of our sinfulness in the cross going down and coming up again thus imputing on us a righteousness a holiness that makes us accessible into the mighty presence of the lord christmas is all about understanding this possibility of righteousness understanding this possibility of holiness and he goes on to say prophet of the most high you shall go before the face of the lord to prepare his way prepare his way what is preparing his way what is preparing his way taking up the child in his hands he says oh my child you will be the call the prophet of the most high preparing the way for christ and who will be that christ he uses some interesting words and in that benedicted prayer benediction prayer he says imputing the message of christ imparting the message of christ is all about talking about knowledge of salvation and what is knowledge of salvation it is all about remission of sins of a say is all about release from the bondage release from imprisonment forgiveness pardon letting letting sins go as if they have not committed or even if committed not counted remission from the penalty of sin remission is a powerful word remission that takes you out of darkness into the light of christ he goes on to say what does it mean to be preparing the way of christ it is talking about the tender mercies of our god we talked about mercy but that mercy is given a little more definition compassionate mercy benevolent mercy love filled mercy christmas is love and mercy meeting together christmas is benevolence and mercy meeting together christmas is compassion and mercy meeting together as he goes on he says day spring from on high has visited us the rising sun has come down into darkness rising of a new light a new dawn for a people in darkness what sekaraya promises what john would prepare the way would be for the one who would be the new dawn where every darkness of sin and sinfulness would give way to new light that is in christ and therefore it's beautifully beautifully summed up saying he shall be light to those who live in darkness and in the shadows of death that's exactly who jesus would be light to those who live in darkness light to those who live in the shadows of death and he says he'll guide our feet into the way of peace who is christ what would christ to do what is it that john would prepare the way when the word incarnate comes down he would b- bring inexplicable peace to a world that is seeking peace groping in darkness and dear friends as 
we prepare to celebrate Christmas yet again, as we prepare to sing Advent songs yet again, remember, we are waiting for a new light. We are waiting for a new dawn. Or rather, we are celebrating a new dawn. We are celebrating the light, the greatest light. He is our Redeemer who paid the ransom, made us free. He is a Savior who delivered us, delivered us from the penalty of sin. The power of sin has promised us deliverance from the presence of sin. He is the one who in his mercy has blotted away our transgressions and give, gave us a new beginning. He is the deliverer who sanctified us, who justified us, who gave us holiness, who gave us righteousness. He is the one who became light when we were in the shadow of death. He was the one who became the guide, who became the peace when we were searching for peace. That is Christmas. And we are waiting for Christ, celebrating Christ once again, who led us out of darkness into his marvelous light, who in his mercy reached, us, reached out to us in a most pitiable and miserable state and became our Redeemer, our Savior, our mercy, our Deliverer, our light and our peace. May that Christ, may that Christ be our celebration this Christmas time, reaching out to as many people with this great hope that is available in Christ. My friends, as we conclude, shall we listen to that great hymn, We Three Kings of Orient Are, a hymn that brings us back to the memory of the birth of Christ. And as we listen to that hymn, let us pray. Help, O God, to understand the word incarnate, who came to lead us out of darkness into your marvelous light much more clearly, much more closely this Christmas time, so that out from the shadow of death, we will be celebrating life, life together. Gracious Lord, once again we thank you for leading us out of darkness into your marvelous light, for sending your only begotten Son to be our Savior, to be our Redeemer, to be so merciful to us, justifying us, sanctifying us, purifying us, delivering us. Thank you, Lord, because Christ is light unto us in the shadow of death. He is the way of peace. He is peace himself. 
bless us lord to understand this this in depth in jesus' name we pray amen the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us dear ones now especially throughout the advent season and forevermore amen